You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. And it's 2020. So what are we going to talk about this way? We're going to talk about the new laws going into effect in California. And let me tell you, there's a whole bunch of them. So we may be here a while. If you get a cup of coffee, I'll be right back after this. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. So every single year, state legislatures go out there and they create New laws that go into effect as of January 1st. So we're going to go through California's uh, crazy laws that are going into into effect. But a lot of these affect a lot of you businesses out there in California. Now I'm going through California. Last night I did Florida. Today I'm doing California. These are the two states that I primarily deal with. So we're going to go through what the people in Sacramento did in the legislature to just create a little bit more compliance issues for a lot of different people out there in business. So, SB3. Now, these all went into effect January 1st, 2020, okay? SB3, minimum wage. So, another pay hike is on the way for minimum wage workers. The minimum wage in California goes up by $1 to $12 an hour for workers at companies with 25 or fewer employees and to $13 an hour for workers at larger companies. So, workers' compensation, the expense of doing business in California just went up, which is going to be passed on to the consumer. So prices and consumer spending has to go up because of minimum wage taxes. AB5, independent workers. Now this was really towards people who work on gigs, right? But then they expanded it and made it even worse. So while aimed directly at gig workers, this new law may also apply to many more contractor independent worker In California, under AB5, workers should be considered employees and not independent contractors if the employer controls the work, directs them in the course of their work, or if the worker's job is part of a company's core business. Uber and several other businesses are suing to stop Assembly Bill Number 5. Now, as of, I believe, I believe Monday... Uh, a court in California um, took a part of the bill and said, okay, this does not apply to those who are driving trucks. So we're going to have to look to see exactly what happens with this law. I don't think it's constitutional, and I think it's going to be challenged even more because there are a lot of people out there who do side gigs. They do work for newspapers and they might write an article for a magazine and they may do two or three, maybe several a year for these magazines. I think under the, under this law it says if you do more than 30, if you do up to 30, write 30 articles, you're no longer a, a gig, an independent person. You are now an employee of that company. So it really does hinder a lot of small independent businesses out there. SB 188, 
hairstyles. California becomes the first state to ban workplace and school discrimination based on a person's natural hairstyle or hair texture. With the crown law, protected hairstyles include braids, twists, and locks. So you can no, you can no longer say anything about anybody's hairstyle, or even if it's appropriate for the workplace. SB, you see what I mean? California has to get their hand into every little tiny thing of Californians' lives. SB 142. Lactation accommodations. While Californians has had a law requiring employers to provide breaks for nursing mothers, many were forced to express uh, breast milk in a bathroom stall or office closet. This new law requires companies to provide appropriate locations, uh, lactation, I mean, lactation accommodations that is close to the employee's work area has electrical plugs, and is free of intrusion. So now companies are forced to provide lactation facilities for their working mothers who are producing milk. I don't know if this is a government thing. I don't think the government should be telling businesses what they should do. When it comes to lactating moms, I, I just don't think that it's a government situation. AB 51 arbitration agreement. Starting January 1, workers can't be forced into mandatory arbitration by an employer. The law bans mandatory arbitration agreements with employees. The law does not apply to arbitration agreements entered into prior to January 1, 2020. SB 1343, sexual harassment. I've talked about this and I've warned you guys so many times about this. This requires businesses with at least five employees to provide sexual harassment training to its employees within six months of being hired and every two years after that. So there's another... uh, this this all boils down to government saying this is what you have to do. And it, it creates another burdensome compliance issue that small companies now are forced into because the state of California can't keep their hands out of making more laws that make it more hard for companies to do business in California. So expect a lot of companies to start moving out of California. There's been a mass exodus over the past few years. It's going to happen even more. SB 83, paid family leave. New parents will have more time to care for their child. Benefits under paid family leave will increase from six weeks to eight weeks starting July 1, 2020. Then we get into the housing issues. AB 1482, rent control. Now remember... The citizens of California said, we want to have a different set of rulings. So the state of California went against, and I think this is going to be challenged in court because now it's unconstitutional, on rent control. Communities without their own rent control laws will now be covered by statewide Rent control protections. The law, the, the law limits rent increases to 5% each year plus inflation, but never above 10% total. The law does not apply to housing built in the 15 years prior. The limit is a rolling number, so the date housing is excluded changes every year. So again, the state of California has just made it tougher for people who own real estate in California on rent and what they can charge and what they cannot charge. Again, the state of California, as a socialist state, is now taking over other aspects of Californians' rights and laws, I mean, in life. 
AB 652 religious displays. You have more protections to display religious items like menorahs or crosses outside your home. The law prohibits landlords and homeowner associations from banning the display, display of religious items on entry doors or door frames. The items cannot be larger than 26 by 12 inches. Now, I want to tell you right now, I am a big supporter of the separation of church and state. This should not be a state issue. Telling people what they can and cannot do on their homes and how they believe in the size of it should not be a state issue. But this is what happens in socialist states. They want to control everything. SB 222, housing discrimination. This law expands existing law to protect veterans and military personnel against housing discrimination. That's a good one. Privacy. AB 375, online privacy. Want to know what information companies like Facebook and Google are collecting about you? The California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA, gives Internet users more control over their data. Among other things, the law gives users the right to know what data is, is collected, the right to reject the sale of your information, and the right to delete your data. I have to think about that one just a little bit. Is this, an, again, a state issue? And maybe this is really a federal issue, not a state issue, because the Internet crosses over state lines. Marriage, SB30, domestic partners. What's good for same-sex couples is good for heterosexual couples. The law allows heterosexual couples to register as domestic partners instead of getting married. Currently, only heterosexual couples age 62 and older were allowed to register as domestic partners because of social security benefits. The new law could help couples with combined higher incomes avoid the federal marriage tax penalty. Uh, I, I, I just don't get it. I, I, I don't know why we have to have all of these classifications. Education. SB 419, school suspensions. Now this one, I hate. I hate it more than anything else. Students in elementary school can't be so easily suspended for causing trouble at school. The law bans schools from suspending students in grades 4 through 8 for disrupting school activities or defying teachers and administrators. Students in grades K through 3 already have this protection. High school students must wait until 2025 for the same benefit. That means any child can be unruly in the classroom, can call you names, can threaten you, and not be faced with suspension. Not be faced with punishment. It's how stupid California has become. Now they have unprotected the teachers. Now they can be assaulted. They can be assaulted verbally. They can be scorned. They can be called names. And it's okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to protect you students. The teacher, we don't give a damn. Healthcare. SB 105, Health Care for Undocumented Immigrants. California becomes the first state in the nation to offer government-subsidized health benefits to young adults living in the country illegally. The law expands the Medicaid program to include low-income adults age 25 or younger regardless of their immigration status. AB 2119, Transgender Youth. Transgender youth in the foster care system will get appropriate health care. The law is the first in the country to include access to gender-affirming medical services, mental health, counseling, hormone tr therapy, and surgery. I don't know. You know what? Come on. 
this is a an issue that parent and child need to be concerned about, not the state of California. Criminal justice. Several new changes. SB 273, Statute of Limitations. Extend Statute of Limitations for domestic violence felonies, felonies from three to five years. SB 439, Juvenile Hall. This law changes the age that a minor can be sent to juvenile hall. The minors under 12 who commit nonviolent crimes would be released to his or her parent or legal guardian instead of being sent to juvenile hall. The law does not apply to minors who commit murder, rape, or great bodily harm. SB 970, Human Trafficking. Operators of motels and hotels in California must provide training to each its staff how to identify victims of human trafficking. Animals, SB 1249, animal testing, prohibits the sale of cosmetic products with ingredients that were tested on animals after January 1, 2020. The law does not affect products sold globally where animal testing is required by law. AB 1762, dog areas. The California Department of Parks and Recreation has until July 1, 2020 to establish a comprehensive list of state parks that allow dogs, including the the specific areas that allow dogs and the total miles of trails that are open to dogs. Uh, I t- I, I'm, I'm going on with all the lists of new laws. I, I told you yesterday on my podcast to, to uh, on Florida, there were very few changes in the laws that really affected people. But California, it affects everything. Now we get into wildfires. SB 167, public safety power shutoffs, requires utilities like PG&E to devise plans on reducing the negative impact on planned power shutoffs to each responders and uh, to first responders and people with disabilities. AB 247 tree trimming gives the California Public Utilities Commission more oversight over tree trimming efforts by utilities. Power companies would have to submit timely reports on their brush and tree trimming work. Now, for many years California had through the uh, state prison system, they had fire camps all throughout the state of California. And these men, during the non-fire season, went out to all of these places and used to clear the brush, make fire lines and everything else. Well, the state of California is wasting the textiles and other things like free health care and everything else to illegal immigrants that they've deprived this use of the fire camps in cleaning out this brush area. The state of California is responsible for this. I just, I I tell you, I don't get it. SB 209, wild, um, let's see, wildfire warning center establishes a wildfire warning center to broaden the state's ability to predict and prepare for wildfire. The center would rely on a statewide network of automated weather stations and fire detection cameras. Uh, I tell you, they, they, California just does not think. If you do fire prevention, if the state focuses on fire prevention and begins to put out all these fire lines and cleaning out the brush, clean out the dead and rotten wood that catches on fire so quickly, they would benefit greatly. But they don't want to do that. So they want to create new laws and new weather stations and all this other stuff. Technology, AB1707, smartphones in polling places. Voters may be may use handheld electronic devices to help them cast their ballots at polling places as long as they don't violate violate I mean 
other election laws. Let's read that again so we understand that. AB 1707, smartphones in polling places. Voters may use handheld electronic devices to help them cast their ballots at polling places as long as they don't violate election laws. I guess that's to look up the candidates and the the measures and everything that they're voting on. I kind of have a problem with that because I think that when you go to vote, you should be clean of everything. Just in case on some of these electronic voting devices, how do you know how they can use that cell phone to do something with with inside that's illegal in nature? You don't know what that may be, and I don't know what that may be. But once you start allowing things to go inside the voting booth, you're opening yourself up to something. I mean, listen, we can't even use a phone on the plane that has electronic devices. I don't know. In California, I'm going to stop right there because I can't keep reading on and reading on because, honestly, the laws that go into effect in California as of January 1st is mind-boggling. And the problem with Californians is that they don't pay attention to what happens in their state legislatures. They really don't. They send these people up there, and they all gang together up there, and they push through some really dumb laws. I'll give you a good example of what they were trying to, to, to think about. Okay, I don't. It never went through, but this is their mind, mindset in trying to raise more tax revenues. At one point in time, California legislators were thinking, okay, we have these satellites that fly over the state of California. What would happen if we taxed those satellites from the moment they entered California state line until they exited California state line if we taxed them for that period that they were flying over the state of California? That's how stupid they are. They are grasping for anything that they can get their grubby little hands on and put more money into the coffers up there so they can waste it. California has become an out-of-control state. The problem is, is, that, is that the citizens of California have this don't-care attitude. They keep living from paycheck to paycheck. The most amount of people that are in debt in, Cal- in the United States come from the state of California because it's so expensive to live there. So the way they they protect themselves for emergencies and everything else is by using credit cards. And they become debt-ridden. And that is the biggest problem of a, of of a state that overtaxes, overcharges, and do not care about the real citizens of California. Instead, they keep passing more laws that makes it makes it harder for businesses to remain in business. They're not protecting the small businesses in the in the cities from the homeless plight that are sleeping on their doorsteps, and smells like urine and poop and has syringes and everything else. And the state of California or the cities come against the business owner and not the homeless person that's making the mess. Small businesses in, in, in the cities are fighting so hard against City Hall because they are always coming down on them for not keeping their workplaces and entrances clean. How can you when you've got people there every single night shooting up drugs, pooping, peeing, sleeping? The cities do not protect small businesses. And that is one of the problems with a socialist society is they don't care about businesses. They want tax dollars so they will tax you and they will fine you so they can build up their funds. California has gotten out of out of control, and the people in the state of California, they don't care. They just sit there and take it. And the, and the politicians up in Sacramento, they know that. 
Because no one stands up and says, okay, enough is enough. So those are the new laws, and those are my political rants. <laughs> it's sad. It really is sad. When you see a state that is so beautiful being destroyed by politicians who don't care about the citizens of California. Instead, they want social justice and they want all of these new reforms that do nothing to help Californians. I don't know how many, when I was living there, I don't know how many tires I popped because I hit big old holes in the roads driving in L.A. because no one's working on the infrastructure. They don't care. When I was leaving California, in July when I was moving out of the state of California, the homeless population in Round City Hall of Los Angeles has gotten so bad that it's inviting in fleas and and rats. They were having to change the city hall carpeting because they had fleas in there from the rats. They were changing it out the day that I was leaving California, and I thought, my gosh, this is, I'm so glad that I'm leaving California at the moment. Even though I was born in California, I started my business in California, I have friends and family in California, but I can no longer stay there. I'm a, I'm a California refugee that had to move out because things were getting so bad. Rents on, on commercial property had gone skyrocketed. Rents on housing, a 300 square foot studio in Glendale, California was $1,800. Now, who's going to spend for 300 small square feet $1,800? And I even saw it up to $2,500. So the cost of living there and the gas prices that are now just about $5 a gallon limits people of what they can spend on food and what they can spend on supplies for their home and for their children at school. I mean, it's just gotten out of hand, but Californians don't care. So what do they do is they move out of the state of California because they go to better tax-friendly states and places where they can open up their business without so much hassle. So they go to states that don't have state taxes like Nevada and Arizona, Florida here, Texas. Because they are friendly to small businesses and they're happy to see businesses move into their area to create jobs. So this is a problem. California is now forcing people out through all of these rules and regulations that they continue to adopt. So buying rental property in California, I would not do it. I wouldn't do it. It's too much of a hassle. I have people who own apartment buildings in California who spend all of their time fighting City Hall because there are more and more regulations. And there, as an example, I have one who has one in West Hollywood, a beautiful apartment building. And she's being forced by the city to do retrofit and it's costing her millions of dollars to do it and she gets no help from the city to, to do it. It's required of her to redo her whole building. And you know how much money that costs. She's now had to put locks on her garbage bins outside because the homeless would come and toss everything out into the alleyways and onto the street trying to see if they can find food and everything in there. And she is fined for all that garbage on the street that these homeless people came and threw out. So now she's had to put locks on them. And now she has individuals sleeping beside the garbage cans in little tents in West Hollywood. Uh, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm getting pissed off. <laughs> I don't want to get pissed off at the beginning of the year. I have too much good stuff that I need to do. Listen, if you have any comments or questions, send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682, and I will answer you. This is Mike Lodge for the WBT. Everyone go out 
Have a great day and a brand new spanking 2020. Talk with you soon. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.